comes within you look if you're a slave somewhere else and you come within that nation you're free because they didn't have a reason to enslave you that's fair that's justifiable but guess what it even tells you not to return them because it was like a sanctuary place but if you were a slave within israel you were a slave within israel let me state the case let me, let, right. let me state the case that may, that's even worse than slavery and most no, no, of wait, the before you do that before no, you don't do let him move, do don't let move if, on if anything, right, right, you just basically back to what i just said that literally right how we think of slaves is not the same conditions as we see them in the scriptures because a slave to have an opportunity to run to another slave master for the slave master not to return him that's unheard of when you think about modern type modern day modern day type of slavery where someone escaped from the slave masters and they're there fine they have to return them they're beaten and some of them are unalived clearly it's not the same because the bible is saying here that if a slave runs away then there's obviously a reason why they run away that they are being oppressed so you have to take care of them you have to accept them and you have and you cannot oppress them the bible is very literal in what you're saying you're talking about illiterate but clearly what you're reading right here you're just agreeing what i'm saying in the loudest way possible and they live among them and if they learn that they live among you guess what happens they have to earn their i'm not saying they become slaves they just begin to work like everybody else is working that's employed to take care of their right. read deuteronomy chapter 15 1 through 11 and you see that every seven years debts were counseled canceled every seven years you want to talk about god's rules god's rules for them because he knew they had they had uh indentured servants or employees because of debt, he says every seventh year they have to be released from the debt. If so none of these that rules, don't sound like if that if none of these rules exist, right? Imagine how messed up these Israelites would have been towards uh, you know um, the, um, their slaves. They would have literally just treated them so harshly to a point where they would have remembered how they used to be treated as slaves, and they probably would have exercised so much force and grievance onto these people. So it was necessary. They you know what, if these guys are going to mess around, I'm going to put certain things in place to stop them from mistreating their slaves like this. But again, that's a, that's no, a problem sir. and I don't see it. No sir, that's why you guys were going to tell me not to go off, right? So I'm glad that you actually went there before I went. The reason why slavery in Israel sometimes would have seemed as though they didn't want it is because the god of israel actually used to command the israelites when they went to war instead of taking slaves to simply just exterminate everybody so he he didn't even show mercy to you he didn't That's give you a war, chance yeah. oh, hold up hold up hold up he didn't always give you a chance to work for your freedom in fact when they went into the promised land there was only one order exterminate and let none survive not even their animals and the one group that did survive they made them slaves you can't argue with me about that that was directly from God. That's friendly. That's called. That is worse so you, than slavery. That is. I know. So I know. But check it out. Check it out, bro. Like you, you, you're, so you're you're defending friendly warfare. What is that? So friendly warfare is like, okay, we gonna fight y'all. We're not gonna hurt none of y'all. Wow. Um, um. So now you get the. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on I know you got something to say. Hold up. But I'm just saying this. Like, so this friendly warfare system that you that you think would be this perfect this perfect scenario that when you go to war against somebody, you start fighting them. Then what ends up happening is, <clears throat> since we can't take your slaves, or we can't in fact when they went into the promised land there was only one order exterminate and let none survive not even their animals and the, in fact when they went into the promised land there was only one order exterminate and let none survive not even their animals and the one group that did survive they made them slaves you can't argue with me about that that was directly from God. That's friendly. That's called. That is worse so you, than slavery. That is. I know. So I know. But check it out. Check it out, bro. Like you, you, you're, so you're you're defending friendly warfare. What is that? So friendly warfare is like, okay, we gonna fight y'all, but we're not gonna hurt none of y'all. While um, they trying to take your life. Um. So now you get that. Hold on. Hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. I know you got something to say. Hold up. But I'm just saying this. Like, so this friendly warfare system that you that you think would be this perfect this perfect scenario that when you go to war against somebody, you start fighting them. Then what ends up happening is, <clears throat> since we can't take you as slaves, or we can't bring you into into subjection to us as a conqueror, then what we do is we gotta unalive all of you, bro. So if your life was spared, bro, like that wasn't worse that your life was spared, bro. So you came worse, into my land. They came into. They, okay, imagine I am a Canaanite wait, for wait, one wait, second. Who came in? Who came into your land? The Israelites were colonizers. Check my picture. 
I'm the black dude right there. The Israelites, the Israelites were colonizers. <laughs> the Israelites were colonizers. They yes. came to your land. If, if you, land? If you read the Bible, them. if you read the Bible from a neutral perspective without taking sides, the reason that the Israelites give for why they had to, they were justified to go into the promised land it's only reasonable to them it makes no sense if, if if the americans came to africa and said god told us that he promised us the promised land to our descendants what consideration are we going to have about that what evidence do we even have that god genuinely told them that you. right so was the temple was the first of all my dear brothers I am pretty sure you are not biblically illiterate neither are you linguistically illiterate because if you read deuteronomy 23 it's not telling you how to treat your slave it's not even telling you it's not making laws about slavery within the nation of israel it's making laws about what happens when a slave escapes from somewhere else and comes within you but generally in the ancient world bro <laughs> if you were a slave you were enslaved you were considered a second class human the temple in jerusalem built by built by slaves or was it built by Israeli people? The temple in Jerusalem was not built by slaves. Now you're going off topic. Okay. We're, no, no, we're not going off topic because if I'm yeah, going to have slaves, I ain't going to be doing the hard work. I'm going to be making them do all the work. They were so motivated by their religion to build the temple. That's why when Solomon made a, when Solomon sent a cry out, everybody volunteered. In fact, people volunteered their resources. There was even more resources than needed. It's the same system as so taxation. Why do I need slaves? Then why do I need <laughs> slaves? Brother, the temple in Jerusalem about, ain't got nothing to do with slavery. About, let's talk about the point. Go ahead. Can I, make a, can I ask a question? How <laughs> long? How long were the Israelites slaves to Egypt? The Israelites were slaves in Egypt apparently for four hundred years, but that's not true. Hey, but hey, you ain't hey, gonna bro. never get to go nowhere, bro. Right. You're, you're when it comes to Bekanji, I'm gonna tell you all this, right? Bekanji's ways are right, okay? No matter what you say, even if he thinks it's right, he will still tell you it's wrong because in his eye, he has to be right. Am I wrong, Bekanji? I have invested more time and I'm not motivated by my emotions or by a need to worship. I have looked at the Bible without bias. And there is no justifiable reason why the Bible in uh -huh. any book that should be condoned anywhere in the world. It is an ancient okay, relic that needs let me to be thrown away. Bible. Was you ever a Christian? Of course, for 25 years. Okay, what happened? Why did you leave? You became a um, right? Check this out, okay? Listen, this is amazing. For once, I decided to use the same scrutiny and the same intensity with which I judged Islam, Buddhism, and every other religion in the world. I decided to put Christianity through the same judgment and it failed. In good conscience, I could not condone that because Christianity, when I decided to judge my own religion with the same intensity that I judge other religions, my religion was just as bad as all the rest. Christianity was not was no longer impressive. It was the same thing as Islam to me, just coming from two different people. Okay, what makes Christianity? What makes what? Christianity. What makes Christianity? Yeah. A person that has come under the direct influence of Euro imperialist civilization and, and mentality, right? So, listen, listen, hold up, hold up, hold up, please. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, they used to be a christian yes mix you know like where did where did christianity come from yeah, so that's what i'm saying if, if you let me finish my statement I'll, I'll, I'll say it it won't even take 20 seconds right, right. Anybody that has come under the influence of European imperialism and has become convinced due to their weakness and their inability to overcome the system and be, having a lack of any other form of ideology, that person will come to believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because they have no other choice, they have no other understanding. And that religion makes a lot of promises that appeal to a person's greed and selfishness. It is attractive. Right. So let me ask you again. Hold on. Wait, 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 Gavin. Hold on. Again, we still have to answer my question. Right. Why are we a Christian? You're a Christian because you're insecure about your humanity and you're internally selfish. And you cannot deal with the guilt of the fact that sometimes you make mistakes. Right. That's why you're a Christian. Let me, okay, okay. So you're still not going to answer the question. I get it. You know, I don't know whether you've read the Bible or not. So, but 25 years. Anyway, let me ask you this question. Right? Oh, are you asking me according to the Bible? My bad. My bad. Let me finish. 
you said that to be a Christian is to satisfy our own greediness, right? Yes. If that's the case, why would Jesus tell us to, you know, um, give our portion to to people and help people out and go sell your possession so they can help other people and take care of other people? That doesn't sound like greediness to me. It sounds like God wants us to be caring and loving to one another. No? Even the Pharisees and the Gentiles do that. That's not impressive. No, they don't. Yes, they do. literally... Okay, let me give you an example. The man that came to Jesus said, "A good doctor and good um, master, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God?" What did them? What did um, God say to them? John chapter Jesus three, verse one, verse sixteen. Not from verse sixteen, right. but from verse. Uh, right. Check this out. Hold on. Check this out. Check this out. What did um? Check this out. What did Jesus said? You must go. Um, have you um, um, obeyed this commandment? What did the guy said? Yes, I have. And then what did Jesus tell the guy? Go ahead and sell your possession and do what and come follow me. What did the guy do? He left. Okay, why? Because he didn't want to do what? He didn't want to sell off his possessions and, right. and give so them clearly, away. Right, so hold on. So clearly he, he he missed the mark of what it means to take care of other people, right? No. He didn't. You just said to me, he that doesn't work shouldn't eat. Why should he suddenly go, go and give all his riches to someone who hasn't worked for it? Use your brain. You're contradicting your own sex. I heard you say earlier that a person who doesn't work shouldn't eat, right? So why should I go and sell all my riches and give away to, to people who haven't worked for it? No, what sense does that make? Hold on. You know, you know, you don't understand what I'm saying, right? You, you made a statement, right? Your statement was, oh, you know, Christianity is to, is to serve our own greediness. If that's the case, then Jesus should have condemned that man for not wanting to sell his possession. He should have just kept it. If that's your, it's just your um, ideology, there was no need for that man to be condemned. But he left being condemned because he knew that he wasn't helping other people. He wasn't caring for other people. Listen, and I'm, the thing is that I'm a big advocate that you have to help other people as much as you can, regardless of whether you earn more money than another person, another person doesn't, right? But you don't believe in that. According to your own logic, you know, if Christianity is based on that, then Jesus Christ shouldn't be out here teaching that. But he clearly teaches us that. He clearly tells us that we have to be caring, loving, kind, and give and to other people and give wholeheartedly. We shouldn't give to expect back. If that was the teachings of Jesus, it kind of contradicts your very statement that you're making, brother. Brother, again, you are being extremely biblically dishonest because the okay. standard by which Jesus okay. told okay. that... Okay. okay, check this out. Hold on, check this out. Check can this can out. I say something real quick, please? Hold on, wait, 10 yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, are, you are, you are, you are. Check this out. What I said, right, tell me how it is dishonest, how it's not in the Bible. Tell me. Because well, that standard that Jesus gave the young rich man is not the standard by which Christians are converted into Christianity. Hence, you can't show me one Christian in this world that actually practiced that. Show me one Christian that sold everything and gave to the poor. See, hold on, listen to this, right? This is where you don't answer a question. You just listen to argue, right? I just literally told you what Jesus Christ teaches Christians to do. So clearly, Jesus has a set way of how Christians to live. How somebody else lives, if they live contrary against what Jesus has taught them, they're clearly doing something wrong. They're doing something against christ but i'm asking you what christ is teaching us what to do how is what christ teaching us what to do wrong because christ did not teach you how to do it christ was in context he was only talking to that rich man and there's nothing to suggest that christ was talking in general you are generalizing a statement and so, encounter so on, which was specific you hold on Mekanga, you read the bible stop being intellectually dishonest right well i don't know if i can use the word intellectually but you're being dishonest doesn't the, doesn't Jesus Christ tell us right to give? I mean, he does tell you to give. Oh wait wait wait! He tell us to give, so. Jesus but that's Christ not what makes you a Christian. Hold on, give me a second, bro. You guys can talk. Give me a second. All right, I'm gonna say what I was gonna say earlier, right? And I really wish that he could be here to hear it. What makes you a Christian is the fact that you hope that. Despite all the messed up things that you have done in your life, that makes you as human as everybody else. Some way, somehow, somebody somewhere 2,000 years ago died for your sins. So now you get to live your life the way you want to, and no matter what sin you sin, all you got to do is say a few words, and then one yeah, day you're not going to suffer the consequences of that. Bikanga, I got a question for you. I got a question for you, bro. So, so what do you show me where Jesus had slaves? Show me any place where Jesus did some some sin. Like, show me. Okay. You know, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm a, yeah. Tell, you tell, you, tell you want me to me show you somewhere where Jesus suggested that you should become a slave? No, 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 no. I'm saying show me something Jesus did that was a was wrong. You say that makes him a bad person. Show me that. 
Um, he went into the oh, temple. Wait. He went into a temple and was destroying the. Oh, the, no. the, 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 the hold on, hold on. Listen, listen, no, listen, 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 listen. I don't care what your reason is. You don't go into a temple that you no. didn't build with your own hands and begin to to throw away people's things, bro. That's rude. I don't care what your justification is. That is straight up disrespectful. Okay. So that makes that is evil. that makes me bro. That's all that you got, that, bro. You that at the know. very least, hold up, bro. Hold up, bro. That at the very least, show you that Jesus was like a man, like every other man, and he had a temper, and he would lose his temper sometimes, and he faltered. Okay, so do you stand against injustice? <laughs> do I stand against injustice? Yeah. It depends on what you consider injustice. Stealing off people, frauding people, nope. conning people. You nope. don't stand against that, so you, so that's okay to do that then, yeah? Personally, from my perspective, I think that everyone should do what they want to do. For example, right, just check this out, please. Give me uh, five seconds. A thief has the right to steal, and a police officer has the right to catch the thief. So I just sit and observe. But yet you hold God to a standard that says he has to be... Like Jesus has to be like absolutely perfect. So yeah, because he claimed to be perfect. He claimed to be perfect. All these other human beings ain't claiming to be perfect. He claimed to be perfect, and we can clearly see that he wasn't. So oh, one of the hold on one other thing. Tell me in the Bible where it says I can live how I please. Tell you show you in the Bible where it says you can live where you pl live how you please. Yep. I don't Tell understand your question. I don't, I don't. I don't understand so, your question. Okay. Neither. So it's, okay. Okay, so tell me, show me in the Bible where a Christian is told that they can go and sin as much as they like. They've accepted Jesus Christ so they can go and do what they want. Give me a minute. You know, everybody else can do what they want except the Christians. That's what he's saying. Bro, I'm about to get off this man because this dude going to give me my belly. For <laughs> <laughs> this is such insult. Um, Big oh Bad Wolf. God. Yes, he did say that. Yes, he did say that. He said that we can go and live as we please. Oh, my goodness. Hey, brother Kwani. I'm going to drop down, man. Love you guys so much, man. Let Kwani know. Thank you so much. Kwani know. Yeah, All right. Left. Ephesians chapter right, 2. What? Ephesians chapter 2? Yes. Okay. What verse? So repeat your question again, so I make sure I'm answering your question directly. Okay, so where in the Bible does it say that all a Christian has to do is act Jesus Christ, accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and then they can go and do what they please? Okay. For Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 8. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and that is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So guess what? Based on this verse, what saves you is not anything you do. So no matter what you do or what you don't do, if you are saved by grace through faith, then you can do whatever you want to do. That's easy. What's faith? What's faith? Faith, according to the Bible, is described in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. That is the biblical way of usually interpreting it. But faith really is just a belief. Hey, it's, it's, it's back on God roasting you guys. Of oh, course. No, Leo left. Le no, he's not roasting me at all. He's, I, I, he's trying Man, to give me a he verse. Made Leo quit. Oh, he no made Leo way. quit, yeah. He said, he's basically trying to give me a verse where it says that um, all we have to do is ac accept Jesus Christ and then we can sin and do what we like. And he says it's Ephesians chapter 6, verse... Bro, bro, let me... Let, in fact, let me show you. First John, let me give you something to also that implicates that as well. First John 1, 9, okay? I know you guys love that verse. First John 1, 9. Yes. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Glory be to God. From 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 what? He can cleanse you from what? All unrighteousness. So you can pretty much do whatever you want to because he can cleanse you from so, all of it. So let's right. read the verse. But you before. forget that part, but you forget a part the, though. Read, read read verse eight. I mean, okay, cool. If we say that we have no sin, we have deceived ourselves and the truth is not in us. But you forget this part where it says that if we confess our sins. Yeah, you. I mean, confessing your sin, how hard is it to confess your sins? 
Oh, you think it's that easy? Eh? Oh, bro, God, I'm telling you, bro, I'm listen. This is your no, license I, I, to I, sing. Hey, 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 wait, hold on, hold on. It's, it's very easy. You know, it's like me picking up the phone and speaking to you right now. Hey, bro, I confess my sin, man. I stole, I stole something from you. You think it's that simple? Confession is something you do by speech or by writing. Yes. Mm, so you're forgetting the heart issue. You're forgetting that if you're going to confess something to God, you need to make sure that your heart is in it. Because Well, your is that, that it, is subjective. You would never know if somebody so else does it that way. My brother. Hold on. If, you're not, if your heart is not in it, and you're saying, okay, it's like when Jesus said, yeah, I'm just going to give you an example. I'm not I'm going away. It's like just when Jesus said that they, um, they glorify me with their lips, but their heart is so away from me. So it's like that. You just confess with your lips. But if your heart is not fully repented from God, what's the purpose of it? Again, anybody can pretend, anybody can try, and everyone, you, you all Christians are going to claim that you're not perfect, right? That you always fall short, right? All I'm saying to you, it doesn't matter if you sin 90% of the time, somebody else sins 20% of the time, somebody else sins 99% of the time. This verse is your license to sin because no matter what you do, no matter how many times you fail in your heart, you can just confess it and it's all going to be good. But you know what? Hold on, Gavin. One thing that he's saying that I kind of agree, because some Christians seem to think that once we, because we are saved by Christ, you know what? We can go out there and still live out, because we're saved, so we can live out the way we want to live. In that in case, you know what? There are some Christians that think like that. But again, this is not what God is teaching us. If anything, God teaches us to live righteously. That's your opinion. So, that's not oh, my no, opinion. No, that's wait, what the Bible says. Uh, Carms, let me ask you this question. So, do we? Is is our faith just based? Is our walk with Christ based on one verse? Brother, your walk with Christ is not based on one verse. I agree. So, this is what Paul says in Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin so that grace may increase? Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live, it in, any, live in it any longer? Answer my question. Answer that question. You, answer it. <laughs> answer. <laughs> How'd you do that? Hey, Baganga, how'd you do that? We no, because you because Romans chapter six, you. Romans chapter six is actually one of my verses that I use to show you that your inability to practice your religion is indicative of the fact that your religion is false because your religion seems to suggest at some point in time that you shouldn't be able to sin. According to that right, verse, that's, Baganga, let me ask you this. You that's why I asked you to answer the question. Baganga, you keep on emphasizing on religion. We're talking about God. We're talking about Jesus Christ. He's not a religion. God is God. You know what I'm saying? So keep stop saying religion. I say religion because when I open my dictionary and look up the definition of the word religion, it says that it is the worship of a superhuman being, especially God or gods. Literally, God is in the word, the definition of the word religion. God, hold on. If you're talking, I mean, that's a religious act. If you're talking about what God is telling us to do, that's not religion, bro. First of all, no, bro, that's I'm not, not, I'm not talking really about what God religion. is asking you to do. From my perspective, God is not asking you to do anything. I'm criticizing the book that you claim came from oh, God. Bro. But bro, you're criticizing on something that you have no knowledge of. Oh, I have. I mean, I have complete knowledge of the entire Bible from Genesis course, to Revelation. Of course, of course, of course. I forgot you were a Christian for twenty five years. I forgot about that. I'm my bad, bro. I'm my bad. But clearly, right when we asked you a question in terms of how Jesus wants us to live, right, you kept on talking about how man is living instead of how Jesus Christ is teaching us to live. You clearly, me and you both can agree. Or actually, I don't know about you. We can both agree that. You know what? Men are very sinful and men are very evil, right? But clearly, that's not what Jesus Christ is teaching us for us to live evil. He's teaching us for us to live righteously. I'm still trying to understand what your issue with what Christ is teaching us. First of all, thank you. Thank you very much. I like. I actually like the way you put it that way. So what is my issue with the teachings of Christ? I think that the teachings of Christ is literally the science of domesticating a human being. That is the mentality that you give a person that you want to remain in a permanent state of slavery. For example, Christ teaches subjugation, and he does not discriminate who you subject yourself to, right? So he, he teaches you to subject yourself to your masters, regardless of how horrible your masters is. He says to turn the other cheek. Bro, the natural reflex so, let me, of a human being is to defend themselves. Says, right, so let me say this. The Bible says we're no longer slaves. We've now been adopted as sons and daughters of God. Are we still being enslaved by God? Yes. <laughs> let me read it to you. Actually, let me just read the scripture directly, okay? Go ahead. Galish. Hey, by the way, guys, I'm not laughing at him. I actually generally No, like no, no, him. no. I, you, you, bro, it's I'm okay, bro. Because I love to smile. Go ahead. Bro, you can, you can laugh. You can laugh, bro. Please feel free to just be yourself because you're getting bakangalized right now anyways. So. Bakangu? 
<laughs> is that a new word now? That is what I'm doing to your mind right now. I'm planting seeds that will germinate. You, I promise you you're not. Hold on. I promise you you're not. Just because we are allowing you to share your ignorances and I'm laughing with you, it doesn't mean that you're making sense. Like, I get it. You've got a whole band of army that agrees with your ideo um, um, like philosophy and your ideology. I get it. You've got a whole army of them and they love to listen to you and cheer you on my brother. Just because they're cheering on, that doesn't mean that they mean well for you. Um, so bro, I can say the same thing to every pastor. Listen, 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 you're leading people astray from God. That's brother. what you're doing. I don't ideology, have the power to lead anyone. Verse. Let me hold on. Let me give you this verse. Let me give you this verse, right? I got you, bro. Let me give you this verse, right? And this is to your fans out there, because I know your fans love you. That's why they were like, "Yeah, bring Bakanga on." You know, Bakanga is the guy, man. He sits on TikTok and screams at people all day, every day, and tells them that they're wrong and what they believe in. I mean, I believe in righteousness. I don't know why what's wrong with that. But anyway, what does the Bible say? Beware lest anyone cheat you in cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. Everything that you said here is empty. Bro. According to the traditions, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, not according to Christ. Please, please let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me respond let me finish, to that when you get finish. a chance. Let me finish, brother. Let me finish. Yeah. You condemn Christianity for how people portray the religion. But when I'm asking you about Jesus Christ, you yourself even admit that there's nothing wrong with how Jesus Christ is teaching us because everything that Jesus Christ is teaching us for us to love one another, care for one another, do this and do that. It's all about loving and serving one another. There's nothing wrong with that. You have an issue with how people um, are in the Christian faith, which, bro, I'm in the same position as you. Christians, man, sometimes we don't act right. Sometimes we don't do things that are right. But clearly, we are living a very contradicting life. So instead of you, brother, allowing God to guide you, you have allowed the influence of this world to guide you. But go ahead, brother. I'm, I'm listening. Again, bro. Typically, on mm -hmm. my show, bro, I will straight up insult mm -hmm. someone for saying what you just said. But because I am on your platform, I have to be respectful you in what, speech. Sorry? You did what, sorry? I said, typically, on my show, on my platform, mm -hmm. I would straight up just insult you. Like, like, straight up. Just give you the most appropriate, most harshest linguist, linguistic to describe what you just said right now. But because I am oh, on your brother, show, brother, brother, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you this, right? Please don't hold back because I'll tell you this, right? Probably you, you already know this sister. Um, I forgot her name, man. The lady started cussing me out, man. She started start cussing my mom. Okay, so okay, good, good. Mom. If you're giving me permission, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish the point. All that I did was I went into that live, right? And you know what? She was just so angry and started talking about Jesus, this, Jesus. And I'm like, sis, why so angry? And then you know what she said to me? My mom's vagina, bro. Not like that. That, 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 that. That's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. So check this no, out. I'm, okay? just saying, I'm just saying that. Hold on. I'm just saying that. If you want to insult me by all means, please. I've got thick skin. There ain't okay. nothing that any human being Good. can say to me that's gonna ever make me feel any type of way. Good. You're the one that you guys are the one that's lead that that have this emotion, this anger, this this issue with God. We listen. We love God. We abide in His grace. You don't, guys. Don't don't worry. I got you. I got you, bro. And I'm not going to say anything to violate TikTok community guidelines. This is what I'm going to tell you, bro. The statement that just came out of your mouth prior to the little thing that you just said is the pure uh -huh. manifestation of ignorance and a complete lack of understanding of scripture. Okay. Okay. Anything the else? entire Bible is a philosophy of men. It is written in the language oh. of men by men. Yeah. There is no evidence yeah. to suggest that it is anything more than that. No. That's not what it is. It's show me, by men show me one it's evidence that suggests that the Bible is any more or any less philosophical than the Quran or than the Mahabharata, than any other document ever assembled by men. You are being Perfect. literally I'm glad, dishonest. I'm, I'm glad that you asked that. I'm, hold on, I'm glad that you asked that, right? First of all, I'm not here to talk about any other religion because, you know, clearly every time I talk about the Muslim, they love to get me banned. So I'm not here to talk about them, you know. But I'm going to tell you what the Bible says in terms of what the Bible is, right? Yes, it was written by men, but where did men get this inspiration from? From the imaginations. The says, all scripture is given by who? If all scriptures are given by God, that includes the all Quran and every script. Bro, listen, all bro. Is given, wait, wait, bro. Just answer me. All scripture is given by who? By God. Amen. Glory be to God. Hold up, and hold up, hold up, hold up. Give me a chance, though. Give me a hey, chance. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. Give me a chance. Give me a chance. Work with me, work with me. Bro, what is a scripture? Me, it it doesn't say, it doesn't say all 66 books. It doesn't discriminate. It says all scriptures. The Quran is scripture. The Maharabata is scripture. Every script ever scripted by man, it's scripture. Bro. 
Hold on, listen, first of all, come on now, you're smart, you're a smart man, right? You know that when the Bible's talking about all scripture, it's not talking about the Quran because the Quran was not there when it, this Bible Bro, came. but it says all scripture. It doesn't discriminate past, present, or future. Listen, again, bro, come on now, you're a smart man. You're no, smart, I'm, bro, I'm not, bro, I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not that listen. smart. I'm not that smart. I'm pretty listen, sure it listen, says listen, all listen, scripture. Listen, listen, I'm going to, let's start again. When it says all scripture, what was it talking about? Was it talking about, what, what book other than the Bible existed, um, Please tell me. The apocrypha, the 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 the, the different scripts, the entire Babylonian tablets that the, that Daniel would have known if he lived in Babylon, right? Okay, what's the hold on again? What's the scripture that God gave to these people? What's the scripture? Bro, you're talking about that prophet. Bro, hold on. That prophet is that, that, well, listen, let me, let me finish. That prophet is that just the extension of the Bible. Okay, so again, it's still God's word because Enoch wrote some of it, this person wrote some of it, but again, it's still God's scriptures. Let's just go with your logic, right? The, but again, the, the book of scripture. Enoch, how are the you, book wait, of Jasher. Wait, wait, how are you including the Quran as part of the old scripture? Because you the statement said. All scripture, just like listen, just like the Bible says in the book of First John 1 9, if you confess your sins. God is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It's not talking about people back then and people in the past. Obviously, you guys who live in the future from when that statement was made, you include yourself yeah. in it. Again, listen, you can argue with yourself all you want, but clearly... I'm not arguing with myself. You're just listen, ignoring my point, brother. I'm just going to let you finish. Again, when the Bible talks about all scripture, and this is why I said let me finish reading, because it clearly tells us all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. It's talking about this scripture right here. What book Quran. is that? What book of the Bible is that? What do you mean what book of the Bible is the Bible? What's the scripture? I mean, what's that scripture that you read? Oh, you want to know whether it's King James Version? This is Timothy. Oh, no, Timothy. no, no, no. Timothy, right? So let us look at when yeah. Timothy was written compared to when the book of Revelation was written. Because if any book that's in your current Bible was written after Timothy was told that, then by your logic, that book should not be included as scripture, right? Mm hmm Okay, good. So wait, let us look up wait, when wait, Timothy that, was hold written. On, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Say that again, say that again. You said that you cannot include a book that was written after that scripture was written, right? That all scripture is inspired by, by, by God, right? So we cannot include any books that were written after that statement was made. So let us go and look at all the Bible books that were written after that statement was made. Because if you include right. the books as scripture, you have to include the Quran. All right, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You're gonna you're gonna have yourself start because you're talking about Revelation. Who who wrote Revelation? Bro, don't worry. You're, you're gonna be surprised. Check this out. Who wrote Revelation? Who wrote Revelation? Apparently, they say John. But listen. Okay, and hold on, hold on. John who? John. Oh wait, so the same John that wrote part of the four Gospels was the same one that received Revelation to write. No, there's there is there's, right? there's controversy about that. They're not sure if it's the same one. So this guy, look, honestly, I'm 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 really really trying to understand this, right? I'm really trying to understand this, right? That how do y'all listen to this guy? So because they're not indoctrinated, yeah, brother. That is how <laughs> you can listen to me. Wait, 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 wait. Them listen to you. You indoctrinate them yourself, bro. What are you doing? You're enslaving them with your ideology. You're doing the same thing that you're claiming that the Bible is doing with us. No. You can't speak now? No, no, I'm, I'm looking I'm looking for that, uh, the Timothy. The oh, stuff I'm looking for something. You are literally out here enslaving these people that keep on talking. Oh, Wayne Bakanga, literally, he's not winning. He's leading you people astray. He's literally indoctrinating you guys with his own ideology and how he feels about the Bible, how he feels about God. My man is angry with God. And instead of him finding a way to reconcile his faith with God, he's angry. So now he comes and sits on TikTok and he does all these talks. All these talks. No, listen, nothing at all. But anyway, let's go. But I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to find something in the Bible, man. Go ahead, bro. So, so the book of Revelation was written in 95 AD. The Apostle John died in 99 AD. The book of Timothy, Timothy was written in 65 AD. 67 AD. Okay, so that so when, when Paul of, said to yeah, Timothy that both, all scripture is inspired by God, that doesn't include Revelation. If you include Revelation, you have to include the Quran. 
You may laugh. You may laugh, but what I'm saying is true. You said that when Paul made that statement, he was referring to everything that came before it and that was present at that time. The book of Revelation was written 30 years after Paul said that. If you're going to include if you're gonna include a futuristic right. book, you can't tell me that the Quran is not scripture. Right, right. Again, hold on. Listen to this, right? In terms of the time period in which John received revelation, right? We can only account on when John wrote the, Re the book of Revelation. But again, when it's talking about all scriptures, it's talking about God's word, all of God's word. Your logic <laughs> is oh, God's word. Wait, 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 brother. So in terms of your logic, oh wait, if it was written, if if, if the Bible was, um, if Timothy was written way before John, then we can't include Revelation. If you're going to include Revelation, let's talk about thing. Listen, the the Quran or any other religious books. It's not a word from God. Like, I don't care what you think. That's you know. your opinion, bro. Really, hold on, listen, There's listen, no facts listen. in what you're saying. <clears throat> there is facts because God does not contradict himself. Bro, bro, the Bible is literally a walking contradiction. Again, God, hear what I'm saying. God <laughs> does not contradict himself. And other religious books contradict God. So again. Give, 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 give me an himself. example of a religious book that contradicts God other than the Bible. Yes, God said that he's going to send his only begotten son, he's going to die for us, and all of us are going to accept him, and we're going to have salvation. The, um, the Quran tells us that, no, God didn't do that. If anything, what God did was made it to appear that, it, you know, what it was God that got crucified. I mean, it was Christ that got crucified. It's not a contradiction, no? It's not a contradiction. No? It's not a contradiction? No. So one book says here, yeah, God says, I'm going to come into a human body and then i'm going to um make an atonement for you guys to sin so that you guys can have eternal life another book says that no we don't need eternal life god never did that god is not going to send his son so that never so you're saying that that never happened so Check that's it not out, brother if you're going to imply to me that wait, that is a contradiction is that a contradiction brother wait let me make my statement right i'm not I'm, i don't talk for long no no more than 10 seconds if you're going to imply that that is a contradiction then the possibility that the Bible is true is just as real as the possibility that the Quran is true, right? So the Bible now has the responsibility to prove that its version of the story is truer than the Quran, and the Bible has never done that. All right, listen. If that's what, if that's the logic you want to go on, I don't care for that. I don't care for the book. Of course, I care you don't for care for truth. Let me let me finish. Let me finish. Let me listen. I said when it comes to the Christian faith. Our God is very consistent. Just because you don't have understanding of what the Bible says doesn't make it a contradiction. But again, when it talks about God is not the one to contradict himself in one, um, sorry, say something in one book and then another book say something completely different. That itself is a contradiction. And that's why I'm saying to you that it cannot be the same um, scriptures that was given by God because clearly God wouldn't be out here contradicting himself in two different books. It's like almost like God, want, God, God purposely wanted to start two different religions. That doesn't make no sense. Okay, mate. check this out. Check listen, this out. Okay, let, let me listen. Listen, listen. Let me put to you, you a contradiction in the Bible. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. You are not a second atheist, right? That come to tell me that I'm not an I'm atheist. Still, instead of saying that, sorry, I'm not an atheist. Oh, you're not an atheist. Yes. Do you believe in? Do you believe in something? Do you believe in a deity? I am one hundred percent confident that God lives in your imagination and you made it up in your head. I love it. Then in that case, right, I need to kind of now explain to myself how I created myself. Whether you can explain it to yourself or not, God lives in the same part of your brain that Santa Claus lives. The same place that Superman lives. It's a fictional idea, 100%. You're just a fan. Okay. 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 Exactly. You see how we have no argument? That is my stance. Listen, that's the thing. Hold on. That's the thing, right? <laughs> It's, it's like, wait, how do you call it? You know, sometimes when you keep on going back and forth with things that don't make no sense, it's like, why do you even bother? Brother, do you know that sometimes things don't make sense because the sensors are broken, not because what is being said is not true? So it goes both ways. Maybe, oh, you, don't, maybe you don't have the ability okay, to make sense out of what I'm saying because perhaps you have right, been indoctrinated. Right. No, no, because everything you're saying, listen, again, if you want to keep on talking about indoctrination, it's the same thing that you, you do yourself. So no, don't I am not indoctrinated. Hold on, listen, bro. Let me ask you this. Are you here, right, to try to tell me um, that the Bible is a lie? I am here to confidently tell you that the Bible is completely a lie. You can't show me one truth in it. So are you not, so are you not trying to find a way to indoctrinate me? No, I'm not, I, don't, I don't care if you agree with me or not. You don't care. I'm simply telling you what it is, and it doesn't matter to me what you do with that information. Okay, can I tell you what I'm going to do with that information? Whatever you want to, you're free. All right, 
I'm going to throw that away because none of it, nothing that you told me right here, it still even changes my belief in God. Because let me tell you this, my brother. God is very real, whether you like it or not. He lives you in the back of your head. Him. Yes. Sorry? He's as real to hey, you as the it? dream you had last night, right? <laughs> well, I, I don't know about that, but wherever God is, he's very much real. In, so, bro, again, he's, brother, he's not real. He's, he's not real outside of your imagination. That is why the no, only no, thing you can do to prove your God is talk. Okay. Well, no, and read the scriptures and try to encourage people to live righteously. Reading the I scripture, said, is, no? from, from a neutral perspective, I'm not impressed by you reading the scripture. Neither am I impressed when the Muslim sings his scripture. You're just perfect, acting. Perfect. I hope not. You know, I hope you're not impressed by me. I hope you're actually more impressed by God. But clearly, you're not impressed by God. No, I'm but definitely not impressed this, by the Bible. At the, at the end of the day, my brother, hold on, listen to this, right? Listen to this. At the end of the day, right? Whatever you think or say or do, right? It's not going to change that God is real. Brother. And God <laughs> came and saved us. So whether you choose, whatever you choose to do with that information, brother, but it's your choice. I can't. I can't force but you. But brother, have you ever heard no, that knowledge is power? Yes, knowledge is power. Okay. That's why the Bible says Until that, now, that bro. Cover, cover, hold on, hold on. Let, 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 me, let me say something. Let me say something, okay? Let me finish, bro. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me ask you a question. Knowledge is power. That's what the Bible say. My people perish because of lack of what? My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Perfect, 100%. So go, on, go ahead. Tell me now something about knowledge. First of all, knowledge brother. Isn't what you know. Ch what ch you know check this out, okay, brother? Check this out, okay, brother? Let's not sit here and pretend that the religion of Christianity is not only relevant today simply for the fact that it was being supported by imperialism. Without imperialism, Christianity would have vanished a long time ago. Christianity is not a religion that's appealing in a world where people have their needs met. You understand? Christianity no, is Christianity only appealing. It's not appealing. Uh, Christianity, Christianity is not appealing. May I finish, please? Christianity is not appealing for people that want to live in condemnation, that want to live against the order of God. Brother, that is it. That's just facts. Bro, God has his ways of how he wants us to live. God can wants can us I finish what I was saying? Let me finish. Let me finish. God, want, God wants us to live righteously in abundance and live in good. We want to live accord. We don't. We want to live against that. We want to live by how we feel, how we want to live. We want to live based on our own sexual desires and our own sexual ways. That is not the ways of God. So I don't know what Bible he was reading. Clearly, he was not reading the Bible, bro. What, what, what book was he bro. reading? Bro. It doesn't matter the reason why you have to. It doesn't change the fact that the person who gave you the Bible came to steal, kill, and destroy from you. Only a fool will accept the, a book the from a person that literally yeah. came to kill, steal, and destroy from you. Who would do that in their right mind? Well, I mean, the, 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 um, it's not God that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It's the devil. Exactly. The, the people who gave you the Bible literally were devilish. Oh, so God was devilish then? Is that what you're saying? Bro, that God must be the devil. Why else would the devil's oh. servants, why else would the servants of the devil be promoting a book that is meant to keep you in a so state of slavery? Would, so, then, so then answer me this then. Why would God send his only begotten son to come and die so that we can all be set free? Why would he do that? If it's I a have never religion? met any human being in this world that has been set free from any sin. You are still sinning. And that's not what I asked you. That's not what I asked you. Stop, stop, stop answering with emotions. Why did God, if it's based on religion, why would he send his only begotten son to come and die for us? He never sent his begotten son to come and die. That's a lie. Again, listen, brother, whether you choose to believe it or not... It's I'm not a matter of me choosing to believe it. You can. You no, have to prove that it's true. You see, this is what you do. Hold on, Baganka. This is what you do. You just keep talking and talking and talking. Don't keep talking, according brother. You Bible, keep talking. According, listen, I can talk. According to the Bible, God said it's only begotten son so that we can all be set free from sin so that no one gets condemned to death. Why would he do that if he's devilish? Um, because if he, if he, if he would have stopped Lucifer in the first place, he wouldn't have to send his son, right? That does not answer the question, brother. That answers the question. You, you, you just don't like the answer. So answer that you ju just because you don't That's like the answer doesn't it. mean it doesn't answer <laughs> the question. <laughs> Your answer has no bearing on the question. It's, it's, it's not even for me. Listen that, bro. I'm why did he have to send his son in the first place? Why did he have to send his son? Why did he have to send his son? Because none of us is capable of saving ourselves. So only Jesus Christ can save us from sin. And bring Do you us realize that? Back to the Father. Who, who, what, what, are, what are we saving ourselves from? From God or from the devil? From our own, from our own evil ways. What evil ways? From the way we live as humans. Did, did you choose? Did you choose to be born into this world? Did I choose? No. Okay, so why would God hold you responsible for another man's crime? Because I choose to sin. 
So it ain't got nothing so, to do with another so, man's so, choice. I so, choose to sin. So, so you chose to sin? Yeah. When did you first choose to sin? Tell me the first time you chose to sin. When I came in contact with um doing bad, doing evil. How old were you? I can't remember. So how do you know it's sin? How do I know it's sin? Because clearly it does harm other people. It does, you know, cause a bit conflict. Tell me the people. first thing that you did that harmed somebody else that you knew was sin. As I said, I don't remember, but I'm going to tell you one of them, I lie. So lies are obviously a problem to same people, no? Do you still lie? Do I still lie? Sometimes. Okay, so Christ didn't save you from lying. Clearly, the evidence is clear. By Listen, their fruits, you again, can know them. On, By their fruits, you shall know them. Hold on. That's not your argument, bro. See, bro, bro, thing, right? I, I think you're twisting my you argument. Listen, have, listen, okay? Let, 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 let me give you my argument according to scripture, right? Listen, Check this bro, out. Hold on, listen. Matthew hold chapter on, listen. 7. Couldn't, wait, 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 wait. You couldn't answer the question, right? So now you're deflecting it, right? Again, I answered your question. God came and saved us from our own evil ways. You're talking about somebody else's sin, right? God came and saved us from our own sinful ways. So I'm a sinner. I'm not, in, I'm not capable of saving myself. It needs God to come and intervene and save me from that life that I'm living. Well, I'm God, God has already I, saved you. Let me finish. Let me, let me finish. Without God, I am condemned just like you. But Bro. now I have God, I'm not condemned. Bro, I thought that God had already saved you. So you're telling me God has yet to save you? I never... You clearly listen. Brother, has God I'll saved you already? Or oh, God, will, will God I'll save you in the future? Story, Sorry? Will, has God already saved you? Or will God save you in the future? I'm saved by grace through faith. Okay, so if I examine your life, I should not see any evidence of what you have been saved from, right? Safe from what do you the mean? Home. You have been saved from your sinful ways. So if I examine your life, I shouldn't find sinful no. ways. And what I'm saying is backed by scripture in the book of Matthew chapter 7, no. right? No. No. Hold no. on, hold, no. hold on. Let me be. Hey, bro, you got to give me a chance to talk at some point. Listen, come on. Matthew chapter 7 from okay, verse 15. So I, okay. I've been, I've been here. So I'm, I'm going to read it. The last like 10 minutes. Hey, Bakanga, you're attracting too many people in my life, man. Like, your let followers me, let, are too let, much. So, so it's okay, bro. Thing. You say you have thick skin. I'm, I'm confident that you can handle it. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're African after all. Are... You should be able to. Can I read this scripture so I don't lose my point? Then the brother can go. All right, go on there real quick. <laughs> okay. Matthew chapter 7 from verse 15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, Fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, we enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Ooh, Many I'm will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive mm. out demons and in your name mm. perform many miracles? Then I will say to them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evil doers. Can I ask you something, Bakanka? Did you ever used to be a preacher? Brother, I was a Christian for 25 years and I reached the hierarchy of anyone that understands scripture and that could translate to other people. I converted thousands. Okay, okay so did you used to be a preacher? Of course. Oh yeah, man, I, I felt that, man. Like, honestly, I felt that when you was reading a scripture. Let, let, let me tell you the difference between me and regular people you talk to, bro. I don't discourage people from reading the Bible. I discovered that Christianity was a scam because I spent time in the Bible. I read the Bible from beginning to the end more than 10 times and three times without chapters and verses. But, but, you, but you do know that that in, in its way, right, it's discouraging people when you tell them that I used to be a Christian, I used to be a pastor, I used to be a of preacher. Course. And I've read order, and I've read the Bible and the Bible's a scam. That discourages people. So it, what you it, it discourages what you people right from rejecting Christianity just based on their feelings. I need for you right. to go in the so book, then, read so it, and so understand it. Right, so check this out. You are here to discourage people from believing in God. I'm not here to do anything, bro. How many times do I got to tell you? I say, I am simply speaking. My words are like a storm. You do what you please. But you got, hold on, but you got a whole bunch of followers, though, so clearly they're listening. They're to not you. following me. 
They are following you. No, what you no, think? Li- listen, That's what, bro, 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 check this out, bro. Let, let, let me explain something to you. Now, look at, look at your please, followers. please, please, listen, okay? Let, let me finish what I'm saying right now, bro. The problem with you, bro, is that you come from a place where there are only sheep. So you think that any assembly of entities must be that somebody is following somebody. Bro, where I'm from, there's only lions. No lion follows another. We work independently, you understand? We don't have, we have courage. We're not over here waiting for someone to come and save us. Everyone understands right. that when everyone stands for themselves, then we stand a chance. But we're not going to blindly right. follow the person working in front of us. But you come from a flock. Right. You identify right. as a sheep. So your mentality right. makes you fine. think that everyone is following. No worries, that's fine. I am a follower of Jesus Christ and I'm a sheep to Jesus Christ and I love being a sheep because Jesus said that my sheep will hear my voice and I will give them eternal life. So by that logic, instead of me following, so I'm happy to follow Christ because he gives me eternal life. Why would I want to follow anyone else that does not guarantee me anything? Um, because the eternal life is a scam and there's no evidence that you're actually going to get listen, it. Listen, listen, bro, you don't believe That's me, the whole so point of a sheep, bro. Again, a sheep gets scammed. Wait, wait, a sheep is easy to scam. Something. You cannot so, call something a scam if you don't believe in it, bro. No, I can no, call no, it no, scam that's the whole point. I believe in it. That is the whole point. But the point, hold on. Okay, anyway, anyway, but can't go. Let me let me let me just say this right. All right. I'm happy to be a sheep, just like how many Christians we're happy to be a sheep. We ain't got no problem with that. Because you know why? You know, because Christ says that his sheep hears his voice and he's granted them an eternal life. Do you know what? We can sit here, like I'm just gonna bring this to an end, brother. Um f- thank you for coming on. We can see. Let me make a concluding statement, though. <laughs> let me let me finish. Let me finish. We go can ahead. we can we can sit here. We can go back and forth for all we want and talk about this and talk about that. Like it doesn't change the fact that there is a God, there is Jesus, there is the Holy Spirit. This is His word. Of, um, his word. He's coming back, and. The, the, you know, Bible prophecies are being fulfilled. The things in the Bible is coming to life. Where the people want to remain to be ignorant, that's entirely up to them. And that's entirely up to you. But all I'm going to say is that there's going to be a day where even you, my brother, sitting here before your chest tied up, I'm a lion and I'm this and I'm that, you are going to bow down. You are going to literally confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is Lord. But until that day comes, continue to live in your delusions. But anyway, go ahead. You say what you want to say. Brother... I'm not impressed by an insecure man who is insecure about his humanity, who doesn't understand that human beings are going to make mistakes and you got to stand up for yourself and not rely on somebody else to come and save you. Right. Absolutely. I am not impressed by someone who identifies as a sheep when a sheep literally is not a compliment. A sheep is only good for two things, wool and meat. Mm. You can Mm. treat it however you want to, but you did not invent language. Now you tell me that one day, bro, you don't know the future. There ain't no one day. Those are simply I your fear. Really trusting God. Oh, bro, I thought I, I thought I was gonna say what I was saying. <laughs> you know, just like my you did bad, a monologue. Bad, bad, uh, no, it's okay. It's okay. My I, bad, I was just saying that if you're gonna do that, please give me more time. You get you get what I'm saying? All right, go ahead. Go okay, ahead. Good, go good. Ahead. Because it's is your show. You can do whatever you want to. I understand that. I do the same. So it's I'm fair. just agitating on what you're saying. I'm just. I feel you, bro, bro. I'm like that too, bro. I feel you. The ad libs. I'm giving you the ad libs, bro. Yeah, yeah. Bro, no, no problem. Like I said, brother, when you see someone who has a mental issue, you don't beat them up. You simply tell them what you want them to do. If they are your responsibility, then you try to maybe force them in one way or another. But if they're not your responsibility, all you can do is help. I am convinced that everybody who believes in God has a mental issue. Yeah, we're so, all so do you, hold on. So do you believe that about yourself for 25 years? Nope. Yes, 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 yes. Are you sure? I am what absolutely about all confident. Those thousands of people. What about all those thousands of people that you brought this? gospel to them that believed it do you hate yourself for that no <laughs> do you do, do you know why do you know why i appreciate you though, i have honestly, the power honestly. to recuperate all of them yes you do you do i i and i, and I know that for a fact but the ganga though uh, i gotta go because i'm getting tired now it's okay um, it's okay bro i gotta go to the gym but too but this was good it, it was good having a conversation with you and one day i want to step into your arena for you to just you know do you do you like, record this do, do you record these shows no nah, no nah, i don't i don't uh, I, to I, anybody I like who liked this little i was recording it i'll have you on my youtube go and check it out oh you recorded it yeah of course i always do okay don't worry about Kanga. i love it make sure i'm looking good yeah okay oh, he's so, keeping he's keeping a record of us how how we start yeah i know i know hey make sure yeah, it's going public and it's still going public don't try listen listen, listen i don't have much so, to say there is no god 
There has never been a God. There will never be a God. If you don't like it, you can cry about it. At the end of the day, you still got to go work like everybody else. You're going to die like everybody else. You're going to be forgotten like everybody else. (laughs) Bakanka, let me ask you this, right? When you record these shows, right, are you not meant to get permission from any of us? Um, No, because this is in the public domain. Oh, so you're not meant to get um, my... So, you know, when it says copyright infringement and then you're literally taking my face and putting on your platform is in no problem it's not legal no oh for educational purposes anything that's in the public domain is allowable oh okay okay no worries hey so so everybody jesus died was buried and rose again so that you can be saved from the consequences of your sin in your imagination (laughs) record that record that and stick it on your hey baganga go to sleep please yeah 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 no i'm going to the gym bro then i'm gonna go go live on my show (laughs) no all right no worries take care bro yeah yeah for sure (laughs) <laughs> no, I right, no worries. Take care, bro. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh man. So just think about all those thousands of people he brought to the Lord, that he's given them the chance to be saved from the consequences of them sin. Praise God. This is this this is insane. Nah, this is insane. But. Uh, I can only say, man, like, that day will come. It's not me. Listen, at the end of the day, I always say this. I'm not the one that's going to be doing the saving as God. I just come here to do what I, what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? God is the one that speaks through us. But, bro, I, I, lo- I love that guy. Hey, how you doing, Chris? Hey, good evening, guys. Hey, good evening. Wow, love I was hoping you'd let me in, but uh, you had it all under control. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Control. No, that's sorry. okay, Kwame. Don't, don't ever apologize to me, brother. You you had it under control. So, <laughs> you know, um, Chris, even that here's, call... here's one thing, and you know, I, I, I'm still, uh, you know, struggling with uh, the faith, my, with uh, faith myself, but uh, right. even when I was coming in as a uh, full... Uh, who pay, who, who allows, who feeds those people? Like, if they don't do their part, who feeds those people? It's not a matter, right? Okay. I don't know how much time you're giving me to answer your question. I don't know how much time you're giving me to answer the question. So I know. I'll let you you have plenty of time, but let me make this statement so that that I get to my point real quick. Go ahead. Because it's kind of a, it's kind of a rhetorical question because I'm saying to you, everyone who has employees has a system and everybody is doing their part. Just like you described about paying taxes, taxes, because you pay the tax, then what ends up happening is there's all these services that people are employed to do that are all working together in tangent with each other. Same thing. They don't just have slaves just so I can say, look, I got a bunch of people here I got to feed. They fed them people. You understand what I'm saying? And them people did their part. As they worked, they built up herds and they were able to sell the stuff that they had built up so that they could continue to take care of these same people that brought them revenue. It is an employment. It is not slavery and I, I don't care what context you try to read it in in the old testament it is equivocal to today's working as an employer facts all right go ahead bakanga hey please everyone mute don't interrupt him it's your time I, to I shine try my, i'll try my best not to go too long that way you guys have an opportunity obviously to interject because i might end up making too many points first of all bro not only are you being extremely dishonest but we all know how the world used to be back in the past, right? There were multiple conflicts and multiple wars. When you attacked a nation, you couldn't just let the men go because vengeance was always upon the hearts of those who live in a world where there was multiple killings and destruction between tribes. Yeah. Yes, the, yeah. one of the reasons, one of the major reasons why anybody even took slaves was to prevent a revolution that will end up costing you for all the hard work that you've done. Yes, it is true mm-hmm. that some civilizations had a slightly mundane or what you would consider humanitarian way of treating those that they had captured as as prisoners of war, right? They will give them the opportunity to right. earn a semblance of freedom. But generally, look at the peasant system in Europe. The peasant system in Europe. If you were born a peasant, your likelihood of not being a peasant was very low. You were not working for the knight or for the nobility because you wanted to. Because you had no other choice because they had built a system to design to make sure that if you were born like that, you would stay like that. Just like in America, if you were born a black slave, you're probably gonna be a bro. We're talking about the Bible. So then, let, me, so then let me ask you. Let me ask you something, Bekanka. Right? Let me ask you this. 
you know, if you're a slave, did you have the right to be able to run away? No. And if you run away, what happens to you? You will be hunted and you'll be killed. Okay. In Deuteronomy 23, 15, if a slave has taken refuge with you, do not hand them over to their master. So clearly, you know, these type of slavery was, you know, this is God's commandment, by the way. So can you, can you please give me that verse again, please, if you don't mind? Deuteronomy 23, 15. Deuteronomy. D. Yeah, so. Deuteronomy, your favorite verse. I know that you, you once told someone that's your favorite chapter of the book. No, that's not, that's not actually my favorite chapter that I use to show how the Bible justifies slavery. So, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on Gavin. Read 16 as well. Read 16 as well. Deuteronomy what? Uh, 23, verse 15 to 16. Deuteronomy Let them 23. live among you wherever they like in whatever town they choose. Do not oppress them. I thought slaves didn't have a choice. Yeah, I thought they didn't. Because he's comparing modern day slavery with the Bible. Right. It's that's not the, the that's same thing. That's what, thing, the, the that's what everyone here employment. does every time they come to you and um, talk about slavery. Because this was I was saying to the other person, right? You need to understand the culture. You need to understand the traditions and how people used to live back then. And I get it. They were barbaric. So there were certain things that they were doing. I don't agree with, right? But clearly, the slaves you that we're talking about. In ex hold on, hold on. Let me finish, bro. Let me finish. The slaves that's been spoken of, especially in these verses, are people that were literally working under the condition of other people. And if they were being mistreated, that's a, that God governed them, God gave laws to prohibit them being mistreated, uh, mistreated wrong. Because if you think about modern day sl um, slavery, if you run away and they catch you, they lynch you, they, they, they unlive you, they literally beat you. They, there's, there's no, you don't have no choice, you don't have no freedom. Your freedom is stripped of you. It's not the same type of slavery. The slavery in the scriptures, they had education. They had a good way to live to a point where some of them can actually allow their children to be born, to be brought along, to live with them. I mean, I don't know what kind of slavery y'all thinking about, but it's clearly not the same. And it's not even me justifying slavery, right? Because just like y'all, I don't, I hate slavery in the context of what everyone's thinking about. But when you look at these scriptures, right, it was necessary for God to come to literally put prohibit um, um, put, um, prohibitions in place to stop people from mistreating other people. Go ahead, Bakanga. First of all,